Hello, welcome to my channel Dharma Makes and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how I made this storage box with a hand embroidered The Adventure Zone logo. This project has taken months to complete. I haven't worked on it every day of, of all of those months but it has had its ups and downs and actually I started it before I started filming for YouTube videos. So unfortunately I don't actually have footage of the embroidery process at all but I'm going to walk you through a slideshow of pictures of my progress at that stage. The Adventure Zone is a wonderful actual play D&D podcast and it's one of my favorite pieces of medium and the logo artwork is just absolutely beautiful for this last season which is called Graduation. It's kind of like a coat of arms. So when I took up embroidery in January of 2020, my purpose was actually to get to a stage where I can make this logo embroidered on a t-shirt. Um, but as I started learning about embroidery techniques and how t-shirt fabric and different things react to embroidery, I realized that it's not viable. So then I moved the idea from having it embroidered on a t-shirt to having it on a dice bag. But of course, I couldn't find a dice bag exactly of the size and shape that I needed. So I decided to sew my own. But I have zero experience sewing bags or clothes or anything. And I don't have a sewing machine. So... <laughs> You will see later on what happened. So to start with, I printed out the artwork on some water-soluble adhesive stabilizer and then I stuck it on a painted piece of canvas. I painted it the sort of bottle green that is at the background on the logo that shows up on my podcatcher. Then of course I put it on the embroidery hoop and I started embroidering. And I started with the little polyhedral dice. Um, then I moved on to the letters and I did all of them with very small stitches, sort of like with a stem stitch. Um, so that I could vary the thickness of the letters according to the font. And then of course I went straight into working on the details of the design. The sword was uh, very interesting to me, so I started on that. And then I did the tiny little letters and then I did the paper and the quill and the inkwell. I did deviate with the colors a little bit, but let's just call it creative license. <laughs> um, and then of course I moved on to the little bastion and to reflect that sort of brick texture, I just uh, used some lighter blue and then did the shield and the gauntlet with an outline stitch and then filled it in. And of course finished all the lettering eventually. Now with my, the major design elements completed I moved on to filling in the background fields. And I 
used a sort of very small long and short stitch to make this sort of zigzaggy pattern texture for the background. This of course took me hours and hours and hours because I was being very careful and using very small stitches um, to make everything really neat. Then I moved on to outlining the gold border and I used French knots for the grapes and outline stitch for all the line work and then I used a combination of different stitches for some of those golden design elements. Um, I used a richer gold color and a chain stitch to fill in those borders and I think the contrast um, ended up making it look really nice. When the borders were all done, I moved on to the little scrolls and then finally to the middle of that big gold field in the middle. The logo was bigger than my largest embroidery hoop, so I had to take it off at one point so that I could work on the portrait and the top banners. I used single threads on the details of the face and hair of the elvish portrait because the details were so small and delicate and I wanted to keep as much of the character as I could. I changed the color of the face from gold to white just because it seemed to me like everything was going to melt together into a visual mess if I didn't do that. And I think that was the right call. To remove the water soluble stabilizer, I soaked it uh, for a few hours in lukewarm water. And then I rubbed off any of the remaining stuff and I dried it on a flat surface overnight. Okay, so the next morning with the piece fully dry, I'm tackling making the dice box. First I'm just making a sort of sketch of the pieces that I imagine I will need. Um, I was going to make a very large dice bag. But of course, I have no experience in making sewing patterns or anything. So just with a little bit of internet reading, I was sort of just winging it. And I bought this uh, beautiful purple fake suede fabric um, to use along with the green embroidered piece. This football shape was going to be the bottom and I was gonna and I was cutting out uh, rectangles for the other sides. And of course I'm cutting um, the embroidery piece to size as well. Soon I realized that the football shape wasn't going to work or at least I didn't know how to make it work so instead I moved on for a rectangle bottom and I'm just pinning the pieces together to sort of get an idea for what it's going to be look like and I had this sort of tie-dye jersey fabric um, that I wanted to use as the lining for the interior and I put a piece of cardboard for the backing piece inside so that it would have some more stru structure and here I am sewing everything together by hand 
first I'm just attaching the backing to the front and I did it all by hand for all the pieces the back front the sides and the bottom and they're all um, full suede on one side and this tie-dye for the interior then I pinned them together again and I sew, sewed them together. I wasn't really sure how to go about it and I tried a blanket stitch because I thought that would um, make it loose enough for wiggle room but also um, hold those edges from fraying. And that's what it looks like. Uh, and I turned it back inside out. And to be fair, I do sort of have a bag. Um, I, for a while I was thinking about adding a drawstring. So here I am sewing a piece to attach to the top with the drawstring. And I had a little bit of an overlap which I didn't like in the end so I just worked away those edges um, to be neat. So with some of the scrap fabric from the tie-dye jersey I cut some strips and I braided a cord out of them to use as the drawstring. And of course, I just uh, threaded it in and worked away the edges with some embroidery floss. And there it is! The dice bag is technically done. It is a bag, you can put dice inside of it. However, I wasn't happy with it. As you can see, the stitches are not really nice. I tried my best to be neat, but it was just a catastrophe. It was just in such sharp contrast with the delicate work that I did on the embroidery that I just I just couldn't. I just couldn't call it done. I couldn't just accept that this is it. I had to somehow make it better. So I just took the scissors to it and took it completely apart. Of course, this was a little bit painful because I worked so many hours on it and it was something new that I have never done before. Um, but it was the right thing to do. I know that I cannot make anything perfect, but I think it's a good thing to strive for excellence. And this was not excellent work for me. So I recognized that this is not good enough and I just took it apart. Actually, what you won't be seeing is that I had a whole second go at sewing the dice bag with a slightly modified pattern uh, with adding a zip but that went even worse, if possible, so I'm not even going to show you that. In the end, I put this project to the side for months, actually. And it was sort of torturing me that I have this great piece that I put so much love and effort in, and it was a gift for somebody and I wasn't finishing it. 
So one day, as I was shopping for something else, I found this um, rectangle pop-up box. Um, it had this horrible um, sequin front on it and I couldn't find a plain one. Um, but I realized it was exactly the right dimensions for my embroidery piece. And this way, my embroidery piece had a chance to actually be part of something useful and practical after all. So here I am, attacking the box and uh, cutting off that awful sequin front and also getting rid of the frayed edges on my embroidery piece. And instead of sewing, because that was a catastrophe, I'm just sticking to gluing. I'm using very generous amounts of PVA glue um, to glue down all the edges and seams and to glue down the entire embroidery canvas to this cardboard piece and the edges of the fabric. And I took great care to um, align it and make it look okay. And of course, I pressed it overnight. I knew I had to um, put something on the edges so that it looked uh, neat. And I thought, what else would work better than a simple gold trim? I didn't want uh, to make anything too elaborate to take away from the embroidery itself. So I used these cheap plastic rhinestones um, that I colored with alcohol inks to be gold. And I'm just attaching uh, the rhinestones with hot glue all around the perimeter of the canvas piece. And this is hiding a thousand sins and adding to the structural integrity of the box itself. I do trust BBA glue. It will hold fabric together for sure as long as you know you don't put it in the washing machine um, but having a little bit of extra hot glue uh, definitely makes me sleep better at night knowing that this will never fall apart and those rhinestones really did a good job at hiding any imperfections. Um, they were a little bit too bright and I wanted to dull them down and sort of um, make them more part of the whole piece. So I just took a little bit of brown acrylic paint and I dry brushed with a soft clean brush, sort of aging and blending in the seam with the canvas. I think this dulled it down from the shininess and it also made it look more intentional. I know that for some people this seems like, oh you're making it look dirty, um, but that's the intention. <laughs> Um, the canvas itself wasn't uh, stained perfectly and it does look a little bit aged. So I think this aesthetic works. And um, there it is. My little storage box with the Adventure Zone uh, logo on it is finished. <sighs> it's been one hell of a journey but it's finally complete. I have attached some photos of the final product. 
please do let me know what you think about this project in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. I hope you had fun watching this video. I am really glad <laughs> that this is finished. It definitely has been a big challenge, but I've learned a lot during the process of making this. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed my video. If you like this sort of crafty projects, I have a lot more for you to watch on my channel right now. And if you subscribe, I will have new videos coming out every week. I hope you're having a nice day. Bye!